Forgiveness. There's a lot of talk of forgiveness, mm -hmm. disempowering the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. How does that fit in with repentance? You were saying when you repent the other person, is that automatic forgiveness then because you've repented or does it need? No, forgiveness is not something you do for yourself, not for the other person, for a start. Let's look at forgiveness. Forgiveness is a part of a lot of our understandings about God and it's something very important. I've talked about forgiveness in the past for three or four hours at a time, so there is stuff, some stuff on the net about forgiveness already that you can listen to. But here's a general summary. What does God do? The instant you break one of God's laws of love, you are forgiven. God doesn't demand it of you, anything of you. God doesn't even demand that you're sorry. God still forgives you. Now, you might not forgive yourself, or you may. A lot of times we think we've forgiven ourselves, but in reality all we've done is justified our actions. That's not forgiveness. Right? But from God's perspective, God forgives every single action. So if a murderer comes along and murders your family... God will forgive them, instant, the instant that it happened. But there is this law of compensation. And the law of compensation is what you sow, you reap. The law of compensation is there's going to be an effect for every action you take. So therefore, even though God's forgiven you, there is a consequence of the laws you've broken. And they will have to be, those consequences will have to be paid by your soul, basically. Now let's look at that in the sense of a relationship. Let's say or, or a parent-child relationship where the father abused the daughter. If the father abuses the daughter, the daughter needs to get to a state of forgiveness before she can move on from that damage. And it's not an intellectual pace. It's not, I've heard so many people come up to me and say, look, I've been abused as a child, but I've forgiven my dad now. And I'm saying, I'm sorry, but you haven't yet actually, because to forgive someone completely, you've got to actually feel the underlying emotions they created through their interaction with you, inside of you. And you need to feel them and release them. And then you've forgiven them. So when you forgive them, what happens is this. When you forgive them, there is an automatic feeling inside of you now that you can love them even though they did those things. All right? Now you think with some pretty hard actions like abuse, for example, that's going to take a bit of effort in your part, isn't it, to work your way through the process of forgiveness. Now forgiveness, what that does is a number of things for yourself. What it does is it allows you now to no longer have any emotional response to the action they took towards you. Now. I'm not saying you manufacture that state. It's got to be a real state in you that you no longer have any emotional response to the action someone took, about, took towards you. When you're in that state and you forgive, from that moment you can move forward on that issue. It is no longer an issue tying up your life and, ch and, doing, and changing your life. But you know what happens on earth and in the spirit world a lot? We only forgive if someone's sorry, and even then we have a hard time, right? But let's say we wait to forgive until somebody is truly repentant. The problem with that is this. If I wait until a murderer who murdered my family is sorry for what he did to my family, I am going to be waiting a long time, which actually locks my own relationship up with God and my family by the event. Because remember, my family is now in the spirit world and I could still be having a relationship with them that is perfectly loving. So what happens is this. When I decide to not forgive, what I'm doing is I'm now basically basing my entire spiritual progression on the other person coming to a realisation of what they did. Now, do you think if you're a murderer, you're going to easily come to a realisation of what you did as wrong? Well, you, if, you, if you were going to easily come to it, you wouldn't even word it in the first place, probably, would you? Can you see that? So if you lock your life up waiting for the people who hurt you to be sorry, 
you will not ever be at one with God and you'll never experience the beautiful emotions that come in that state. You won't experience the freedom that comes from forgiving yourself, you know, forgiving them and forgiving yourself. So my suggestion is to allow yourself... Now, there's been long discussions that I have about forgiveness and how it takes place, and we just did one recently, I think, didn't we? So that's on the net, and you can download that and have a listen to that. So there's whole discussions about forgiveness and repentance and interactions and so forth and love and self-love, all in that discussion. So my suggestion is to have a look at that. But in summary... If a person doesn't forgive, they are basically locking up their own spiritual progression and their own bliss. You are just harming yourself. And uh, I've talked to many spirits who are in this state. We, uh, we had a group of slave spirits come to us once and their slave owners, this was in Barbados, and their slave owners, this was like 300, 400 years ago that they had been in this state. They were still in the hells of the first fear the spirits who were tortured by the slave owners were in the hells. The slave owners were in the hells deeper again. But the spirits who were tortured by the slave owners were still in the hells and they didn't understand why. When we talked to them, I started helping them connect to the emotions they had towards the slave owners, which were emotions of rage and, and they, just want, they wanted to do to the slave owners what the slave owners did to them. Right? They wanted to punish the slave owners by doing exactly the same things. We actually helped them with a few spirits, helped them go to the slave owners and where they were to look at their condition. And they came back and said, I'm glad they were in that condition. Right? So they were really, really angry. They were full of rage. What we did was we connected them to their rage and started telling them that that's why they are where they were, because they were still in the rage and they hadn't forgiven now, as soon as they connected that, they asked, what about, how do I forgive? I said, all you need to do is feel the grief you felt having these things done to you. And as soon as I said that, lots and lots of them started to go into their memories about the damage that was done to them. And instead of being in a rage about them, just allowed their grief to just flow out of them. And then I asked them to just long to God for God's love to come to them. And every single one of them, every single one of them moved from the first sphere to the second sphere in that one transaction, just by doing that once. Now those ones are now quite high up in the spirit world. This was two years ago that this happened because I've learnt some of the other lessons of divine love in the process and are now progressing on the divine love path. But understand that what was holding them there for 300 or so years was their state of rage and anger towards the perpetrator. And so it's a very powerful thing to give up rage and anger towards perpetrators. It does not mean you'll allow them back in your life until they are repentant. Because when they are repentant, they will never be able to hurt you again their soul wouldn't allow it. 